Hey, welcome to the homestead. We are out here in the orchard, or the area that's going to be the orchard that was started by the previous homeowner, and he planted some peaches, apricots, and plums. Today, we are going to prune a plum tree for you. Now, I don't think that the uh, previous owner maybe knew what he was doing, or he hadn't done it in a long time, but they are way overgrown. So right behind me, you can see here is a peach, and that is already starting to blossom. So we're gonna tackle that one uh, at another time. Right behind me here, I've got an apricot, and you can see it's just a mess. There's, there's no light down in the, into the center of the tree. And over here, right there, is one of the plum trees. And we're gonna tackle that one today and show you how to do the plum. There's another plum actually over right there. And then there's another apricot over there that is a total mess. <laughs> I don't think that's ever been pruned. At least it doesn't look like it. So we're gonna we're gonna try and rehab these guys, and we've got some uh, compost and mulch down here in the trailer. That we're gonna put around the base and give them a boost and give them a little nutrition. Um, yeah, we've also got the chainsaw hanging out in the back here, just in case we uh, get into any big forest pruning back here. I don't know. I just brought it along because I thought it'd be fun. Anyway, let's get to work and we'll show you what to do to prune this plum tree. Okay, so I've got several tools with me to complete this job uh, properly. So we've got a pair of loppers that's going to be used for the big uh, stock that I need to take care of and take out of there. Actually, the medium size because I have my my folding saw for the big stuff that we, we're going to need to you know, remove and get the shape of the tree uh, back into proper condition. I've also got, let me just throw that down, I've got a pair of pruning shears for the small stuff. Now, what you want to do is you go between tree and tree, or species actually, is you want to use some isopropyl alcohol and you want to wipe down the blades of all of the tools that you're going to be using for your pruning process. The reason in doing that is you don't want to transfer disease between trees and if you go look at my other video uh, from last year about pruning our citrus I explain maybe a little bit more in depth on why but the basic reason is to not transfer uh, disease between trees, between species, so on and so forth. So. We're going to do that and then we're going to get to pruning. Now, I also want to mention that you want to keep your trees at a manageable height. You know, I don't know if these are dwarfs or semi dwarfs or full size trees. Uh, it's just kind of hard to tell since I just got here and, and uh, not too many months ago and I'm just taking a look at them. So, just for ease of picking the fruit itself, um, I've, I want to bring this tree down in height. So I've also got my uh, big extendable uh, pruning saw and uh, lopper. And we're gonna take some height off this tree too. So it, we don't need a really tall ladder to get up there and get the fruit. Now on this tree, it doesn't look like it has a scaffold setup already in place. We've got several main trunks here that are coming up. It's somewhat of a decent shape, um, but you really want to have that vase shape to it. And that is so you can get light and air down into the center of the tree. And right now, this tree is so stopped up in the middle here uh, that once the foliage comes out, it's gonna be really hard to get any light down into the center of the tree here. Before we do that, before we start shaping, we want to look for the three D's. That's any dead, diseased, or dying uh, branches. 
that are on here and we want to take those off. Right now, from just looking at this particular tree, I do not see any serious damage to the tree or any disease or anything that's, that's really dying, which is a good sign. So from there, you want to move to your CAC. Now, the CAC is any crossing, like this one you can see right this here. This one over here is crossing right in front of this other one and coming through the other side of the tree. So this one has to be removed. Because it's just not gonna be healthy for the tree to keep it there. And you wanna cut it down close to the main scaffold branch that you've identified here. And you wanna do that and leave maybe about a quarter inch there so it really doesn't die back into the main branch itself. But you don't wanna leave it too far out because if you do that, then it's just gonna sprout again straight off the other one. You'll end up pruning that again next year. So now we wanna look for any really acute branches and acute angle branches. So this one you can see right here if this gets a lot of fruit on it, this is going to split. And we're hoping for a lot of fruit. But you want branches that are coming off at an angle that's going to be able to uh, sustain in weight all that fruit on, on the branches. And this one is just uh, too shallow of an angle for us, so we're going to take this off. We're also going to look at all these small little shooting branches up and down our main uh, scaffold branches here. Now these are going to do one thing. They're either going to be shaded underneath and they're not going to grow properly. They're not going to get any light like these under here. So we're going to take these off. And the ones on top are going to be sh um, shading our main arterial branch here and that needs sun as well so they're not going to provide any benefit to us here we're going to take those off as well now if any of you are afraid of pruning too much just keep this one rule in mind you can prune up to a third of the tree and it's not going to hurt it at all and even if you don't get to that third or maybe if you go a little bit over the third, uh, the tree's going to recover just fine. And you can prune two times a year. So now, right now, it's probably about 45 degrees, 50, 50 degrees outside here in East Texas. This is our winter, and this tree is dormant. So this is when you want to do this pruning. And uh, on this tree in particular, I don't see anything budding out yet, which is nice. So we're gonna we're gonna give this tree some love, bring it back to life, and uh, give it a chance to really put forth some good effort into growing fruit next year instead of just foliage. Any of this interior stuff that you see, this has got to go. Um, so the last C that I mentioned in the CAC, besides crossing acute branches, is clustering branches. Um, plums, you don't have as many clusters at the end. It's more used for apples and some other types of trees. But if you see any real clusters, like up here, I'm not sure if y'all can see that. I think, it's, I think this tree was pruned a little bit at one point. And let's see if I can point to it, if you can see it right there. That's all clustered up and we're gonna want to prune that back so we have one strong branch that's gonna produce what we needed to produce. Now this is a difficult choice here because we don't have our three main um, branches 
I'm a little timid to take out one of these bigger ones, but this one in particular over here, I just did see it's got a little bit of damage to it and it's in a severe acute angle. So I'm going to bring you over here and show you this thing. Sorry about the sun. Let's move you at a better angle over here. So as you can see, this is at a severe angle. So if this branch here starts to fruit a lot, it's going to weigh it down and it's going to split our trunk here. And you can see there, there's some sort of damage going on uh, right here. So there's two reasons to take this one out. And that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do when I do this is I'm going to undercut this branch first and then I'm going to saw from the top. And the reason I want to do that is when this branch falls from, from cutting it on top here, I don't want the bark to rip down and damage the rest of this down here. So that undercut right here will prevent that. As you can see up here, these two branches also have dual issues. They're crossing one another right here. This one is well, actually three issues. They're crossing one another. This one is clustered. And this is a severe acute angle. So we want to promote outward growth. And this one is going much more vertical than the other one. So we're going to take this one out right here. That's also going to help us get some more light into the center of this tree. Okay, on this branch that I just cut out, I'm going to show you what we're going to do to the rest of the tree. And that is, you see this really red wood right here. That's our new growth. That's what this tree has put on this past year. And plums will only fruit on branches that are more than a year old. So two year old wood and older. So on the rest of the tree, we're going to come by and we're going to trim off that non-fruiting wood so we can promote see this one here it changes right about there so we can promote the growth of the fruit and not the foliage obviously you're going to want to be uh, use your own discretion and not you're only going to prune a third of the tree so you're not going to prune out obviously all the foliage but you want to be very strategic in the way you do this and very careful, um, but just get that tree moving towards producing the fruit. And since you're only doing one third of that tree, don't worry about cutting out too many, too much foliage and, and too many branches. Uh, you stick by that third rule, you'll be good. I hope this video was helpful for you in learning how to prune plums. I'll make another video on the peaches and another one on the apricots. And there's a lot of work out here to do uh, to rehab these trees. But we'll get it done and then we'll also be showing you in a future video how a specific method on how to plant new fruit trees and or nut trees. This method has been passed down for probably 120 years and it's got some really intricate, cool techniques. You're not going to want to miss it and they, it helps produce amazing, amazing, bountiful, healthy 
trees. Stay tuned for that. All of you, thank you very much for being here. We're always grateful that you watch our videos. Thank you to all my subscribers for being here. If you like the video, please give us the thumbs up. That helps us out a lot. That shows others that this is a good video. Also, share us on social media. Go to our blog, our website. Check out our tool store. We've got these items that we use on a daily basis on that tool store. And it helps us out a little bit. I appreciate it. Also, read our blog. Um, we've got some pretty solid articles on there about homesteading. Anyway, thank you, and we will see you on the next video. Um.